Dr. Buzz Aldrin. All right, we're here to promote Buzz's new book, No Dream is Too High. Part of this came about because um, Buzz and I travel all over the world, and people always feel compelled to tell, them, tell him where they were when he walked on the moon, if they remember it. But aside from that also, people have seen our life together kind of and the things that he's done, and not only that, but like seen his sense of humor and just a side of him that a lot of people don't know. So that's what this book is about. Actually, why don't you tell how you got the name Buzz. That's a Christmas uh, uh, card, I think, right? Uh, yeah, you see the name Ed. That's my father. I come along. Eddie? No. Gene? No. Junior? No. Got two older sisters. That's your baby brother. Baby brother? 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 That's how I got to be brother. So he's been Buzz since he was a little baby. So the, here's Buzz a little older. Actually, I think he looks almost exactly the same. And West Point was very formative for you, right? Now, stars on the collar, that's the upper 3% of the class. It's, it's based on, on grades, but uh, you're called a star man. <laughs> so you were a star man even then? Yeah, the, the chevrons... Uh, uh, I was just a lieutenant, cadet lieutenant. However, you graduated third in your class at West Point. It's pretty cool. Yep. Well, his dad was an aviation pioneer. This is his dad, Edwin Eugene Aldrin. Your father also was the manager of? Newark Airport. So here's Buzz. He decided to become a fighter. Well, he wanted to be an aviator, right? So the best way was going to the military. Is that the F-86 or the F-100? F-86 Sabre. And you notice people kind of paint something on the edge. And that is a MiG-15. And this finger up there, that means I just got back from number one, shooting him down. Buzz goes on, oh, actually, okay, so you're stationed in uh, Germany flying F-100s on nuclear alert. I mean, why don't you explain about that, This when Sputnik went up. Okay, I was at the Air Force Academy. I got a good assignment, the best, overseas, Germany, flying Super Sabres. When, when I left Germany, I uh, went to MIT. Uh, so I, I know how to get the perfect pursuit curve to fly on, uh, to get maximum holes in the target that uh, a tow ship is, you got a flight and is doing this. So that's a, you got to get on that perfect pursuit curve. So I start at MIT, what the hell am I going to write my thesis on? Uh, this is 61. See, the space program is going to be doing something. They're going to get spacecraft up here, and they're going to join up with them. Are they going to rendezvous? OK, got to get on the perfect pursuit curve. No kidding. That's, that's carrying over from one to the other. And uh, line of sight guidance techniques for manned orbital rendezvous. That's my thesis. Not very well written, so don't look it up. Well, I think it's online, too, but and you can find it. we, NASA, accepted that for the Gemini program. All the astronauts understood that, so we used the same technique on Apollo. So he made it. He got in the program. Um, and actually, when he, you weren't originally going to fly on Gemini, right? No, I, I talked to the boss, Deke, Deke Slate, and I said, look, I wrote thesis on this with uh, McDonald engineers. I, I helped train some of the guys that, that were going to be doing rendezvous. I spoke to the boss. You know, I'd like to be on one of these rendezvous flights. No. I was back up on Gemini 10. So early on, the first American spacewalker was Ed White, right? 
But the guys were starting to get um, overheated. They were having trouble on the other Gemini flights. And then someone had the idea to train underwater, and you were the first one to do that. Yeah, I heard uh, some of the other astronauts saying, water? How can, how can that be similar to not even air? This is a vacuum. There's nothing up there. But I'd been a scuba diver for nine years, and I know you don't fight the current. You kind of move slowly. And I said, yeah, great idea. So, so there you that. are. OK, so but now we're going to go to a very famous, it's become very famous now, this picture. So what is that, Buzz? The first selfie in space. <laughs> As we know, Buzz made it to the moon. So Neil went down first. Everybody knows that. Tranquility Base, Eagle has landed, and all of that. So when you were going down the ladder right there, first of all, the checklist said. See, you're coming out the hatch. And I knew what the checklist said. And so I said to the world, I'm going to reach back and partially close the hatch, making sure not to lock it on my way out. <laughs> There's no handle on the outside. And if you, if you didn't partially, I mean, if you almost closed it and you had an oxygen leak, boop, door would close and uh, <laughs> no getting back in. Nope. This is the very famous visor photo. And so Buzz usually says... Well, you can see the, the reflection in the visor of my shadow, the guy in white, that's Neil, <laughs> the spacecraft, the flag, and uh, really, that's why it's called the visor picture. So I say I got three words to describe this picture. Location, location, <laughs> location. So you came back, you did lots of parades. They went around uh, 40 cities around the world? 40 days or no, more than uh, one 45 city? 45 days, 25 cities around lots the world. Lots of kings and queens and whatnot. So when he came back, he, he struggled for a little while. You know, what do you do at the pinnacle of your career? And you come back, and what do you do with your life? So I don't know what the hell I was going to do. You, decide, you finally kind of crashed and burned, really. But you did get some help. But, and I got depressed. Uh, at the, and how many years school. of sobriety do you have? And, and depression leads to alcoholism, and you can't fix depression if you don't fix the drinking. Okay. 37 years of sobriety. These days, we're kind of focused on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> I need a little help there, Stonehenge. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, asking the cosmos to. <laughs> so he's been to the North Pole. He did that in 1998 with Hugh Downs. But this, I think, is actually his favorite photo i got to be honest with you, I didn't even know what the hell a whale shark was. It's not a whale, it's not a shark. It's a fish. A big, <laughs> a one. big one. A big one. So, Buzz is totally focused on Mars, so why don't we, um, if we start that, we'll be here all night. Seriously. Which I know you want to talk about it, but I want to give people a, a, a chance to ask you questions about it, and then you can ask the, answer those questions. Why did you want to go to the moon? I wanted to go higher, faster, and further. Why not? <laughs> um, he'd like to know, what did the moon smell like? It smelled like the dust from a fire. All the uh, ashes. If you sprinkle a little water in it, it'll, and it smells like burnt charcoal. Sir, I'm a newly commissioned Air Force officer, so oh. what's, your, what's your top life lesson from the book for uh, looking ahead to a career in the military? You take an oath. I took an oath at age 17 to serve my country. That 
still motivates every kind of decision I make. And I'm happy to say that I couldn't be more pleased with the way things have turned out. Now, other guys are playing golf or, or doing something else, not me. I just get so much joy out of participating, having people know that I'm participating and coming up with common sense, out of the box thinking. My mother was born a year the Wright brothers flew, an early aviator, father, World War II. I get to fly combat in Korea, then I get great education, go to the moon. Now what am I doing? I'm planning for humans to go to Mars and live there. I won't see it, but boy, what a satisfying life. All right, Buzz, thank you so much, everyone, for coming.